All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about encrypting your external hard drive. Um, a couple good reasons why you would want to do this is, say, uh, you have multiple people that use uh, your computer or there's uh, a shared computer at a, an event you use, or uh, also just to prevent, say, if you lose your hard drive or you misplace your hard drive, nobody can actually access the data on it. Now, this is good for personal use, but uh, in this particular case, I'm going to use it uh, to show you how to store your videos, music, and your DJing content on an encrypted drive that requires a password. That way, um, if someone gets a hold of your drive or anything like that, they're not able to get your content. All right, so first of all, I'm going to start off with a uh, brand new, there's a completely empty Western Digital Passport hard drive. It's just the small uh, 500 gig hard drive that you can buy online. Uh, I'm going to show you in uh, Mac OS X. If, uh, if you need a Windows tutorial, I'm going to create a Windows 7 tutorial using uh, BitLocker as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first is I'm going to plug in the external hard drive just into a FireWire port. And it should pop up and uh, power up here for just a second. And here I have my external hard drive on my desktop. Uh, where I need to go is to the Mac OS X Disk Utility. In this particular um, version, I'm using 10.5 Eight. I have not upgraded Snow Leopard on my DJing partition um, for numerous reasons, but uh, in this particular case, it is um, the 10.5.8. If you have 10.6, it might be a little bit different. I actually believe you're only going to have more options, um, but like I said, we'll, we'll go with this for now. If you have any questions, just feel free to shoot me an email. Okay, uh, so we're going to get into the disk utility. Uh, the way you do that is go from your Go menu, you can go to the utilities is the quickest way, and select the disk utility and open that. Okay. Once that's here, it's going to load your internal drive information. I, if you see here, I have uh, two partitions. I actually have a separate DJing partition that pretty much only has Serato. Uh, and then this is my personal partition for me when I use my uh, Mac for you know everyday use. So, uh, and then also it's going to show your external drive right here, the Western Digital 500 gig. Of course, it uh, says 465 after formatting and system files and stuff like that. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here is create a disk image on the drive. Now, there are a couple extra steps when you go to plug in your hard drive if you do this, uh, but it takes an extra four to five seconds, and ultimately uh, it's going to give you better security and better peace of mind uh, if you happen to lose your hard drive. Also, it makes it much easier to back up because you can back up one image um, to another hard drive. You can move the actual image itself and it will still stay encrypted and still have the same password. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is make sure none of these are highlighted, because if you have something highlighted and you click the new image, which is what we're about to do, it's actually going to try to create an image of what's already on that hard drive. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do here is make sure nothing is selected and click new, and click new image. Here we're going to uh, just name our image. Uh, I can call this whatever DJ content or whatever you want to put. Make sure, very important, you're actually saving the image on your external hard drive. So I don't have it titled, but that's where I'm saving it. This is the volume name, DJ Content Encrypted. You can name it whatever you want um, there. Volume size. This is very important. You're actually going to want to choose Custom. Now, this is a max volume size. What we're going to set up is what's called a sparse image, and I'll show you that in just a moment. A sparse image pretty much grows as you put content on it. If I was to create a fixed uh, size image, it's actually going to fill up that hard drive completely um, and show that there's no space available. We don't want that. So ultimately, we're going to just type in whatever your hard drive says right here, 465.8. I'm going to leave out the 0.8, give us a little bit of uh, room to play just in case the image does get too full. So 400, uh, 465 gigabytes. I'm going to click OK here. Uh, this is important. If it, I'm, I'm showing you on a Mac. I use only Macs when it comes to my DJing content, so I'm going to keep it formatted Mac OS X. If you want it com reverse compatible with a uh, Windows machine, um, you're going to have to use this. It doesn't work very well with encryption. Uh, like I said, if you, need, if you use a Windows machine and you want to learn how to encrypt your drive, I, I will create another video or have another, another video available using BitLocker, which is the Windows 7 utility that's built in to encrypt your drive. Okay, you have two choices here. 128-bit AES encryption, uh, which is recommended, 256-bit AES encryption, which is more secure but slower. 
Uh, I don't really take these hints here to heart. Um, 128, 256, depending on who you're really dealing with. Uh, 256-bit AES encryption is going to keep the government out for a little bit. Not, not, not for too long, but it's going to keep them out. 128-bit encryption is going to keep out the average guy who's just trying to steal your content or trying to copy your content over. It's up to you. Ultimately, 256 in the setup we're going to have is n not really going to be slower because uh, it's going to encrypt the information as it comes through. Uh, it's very minute. Once you mount the drive and it's encrypted, it has it, it has the key set already. So when you're loading music in Serato and or loading up tracks, it's not actually going to be slower. It's already um, mounted. What they're pretty much saying is the actual encryption time it takes to encrypt it once you move all the files over and the time it takes to actually mount it. But once it's mounted, your drive performance won't be hindered at all. Uh, in this case, let's just use 120-bit encryption just to make things easier. Here we're going to use um, an Apple partition map. If you're only using this hard drive on an Apple, once again, uh, if you need it to be complete, uh, you know, cross-compatible with a Windows machine, you're going to use the GUID partition map, uh, which allows you to um, mount the drive onto a Windows machine. Uh, these aren't too important right now. These are if you're actually creating a, a disk that you want to encrypt, um, a DVD or a CD, so I'm not going to cover that. Okay, here's the poor part I was mentioning earlier is the image format. A read-write disk image, is, if we have this checked, it's going to create an image, a big file that's 465 gigabytes. We don't really want that because ultimately it can cause cor corruption and then you just have this huge file that you're always trying to load every single time. We don't want that. If we create a sparse disk image, what sparse disk is going to do is actually grow as we add content. So I'm going to create this disk image right now and it's only going to be a couple hundred megabytes. But as I start adding videos and music and everything into it, it's going to grow as needed. And then the volume size up here is the max it's allowed to get. So that's the max size of the disk image it's allowed to create. So let's go ahead and hit Create. And it's going to prompt us to create a password. So here we, can, uh, we have a couple of options here. This is a password that you're actually going to use every single uh, every time that you mount the drive. Now there are a couple options about saving a password. I'll go over that in just a second. Um, pretty much you grow, you're going to want to create a uh, password that's you know extremely strong. We got uh, we got a uh, password assistant here built in the Mac OS 10. It automatically will create a password for you if you want. Uh, that's up to you. Um, ultimately, I'm going to just create something simple for, in this case. Um, and then as you type it, if you have the password assistant open, it's going to tell you the, your strength of your password. So, you know, lowercase, uppercase, symbols and stuff. The more, the more uh, random you get, the more, um, strength, the more strength your password is going to have. All right, so in this case, let's just create a, a weak password. And now here, remember in your password keychain. Now, this is important. If you want to not ever have to worry about entering this password again, um, you just go ahead, you just check mark this, and every time it connects to your computer um, and you're logged in, it's going to automatically send the password and open up this image. Here's the problem I have with this: is if I'm constantly always using this hard drive on this computer, and then that one time I need to connect up to my buddy's computer and I need to put in a put in that password, and I forgot it, um, there's no way of getting it back. And then all your encrypted information is only available on your computer. Um, if you're Another bad part, too, is if your computer crashes and you have to end up reformatting your hard drive um, and you forget that password, that the, the whole reason for encrypting your hard drive is not to be able to get access to any of this information. So if you forget this password in any way, you're never going to be able to get access to it. So I like to say uh, uncheck to remember this password in my keychain because that way I'm using it on a daily basis and I won't forget it. Uh, but once again, that's a personal preference. So I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to create the uh, image. This takes a few moments. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part. OK. And now if we uh, take a look here on just in our regular desktop, we now have another hard drive. Just It's called uh, a disk image or a DMG file, uh, which is what Mac calls it. And so if we go to the actual hard drive that's mounted, all we see is this, the D, uh, DJ content. That's all, that's all we're ever going to see. And currently right now, uh, with the encryption information and it being empty, it holds, it's 157 megabytes. What I'm going to do is double-click it, and it's going to open up. And this is now going to open up a 
image called DJ Content Encrypted. Now, as I drag stuff over to this, um, I can just drag files like that, just like you normally would. Now, let me move this around here so I can get a better shot at it here. I need to drag it to the right folder. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I, I have dragged that file just like I normally would if I was copying uh, information over and is currently in that content. So if I eject just this image, I got to get out of it first. Got to get out of anything I was using it. I open up my finder and then I eject this image and I go to my hard drive once again all I see is that sparse image file and it, it see how it's growing uh, in size as we start adding stuff now it'll grow all the way up to 465 gigs until you know that's the max that I put on it um, now you can also you can always adjust that you want to adjust it to the size of your hard drive I just adjust it to the max amount of capacity that this particular hard drive has uh, if you have a one terabyte drive or two terabyte drive you can do that. You can do it as big as you want. Um, this Apple DMG format actually works really well and doesn't. you don't really have to worry about corruption too much. Um, if you want to have separate, separate volumes uh, mounted um, with different passwords, you can do that too. You can create multiple ones, but ultimately you can't create one that's going to be bigger than the size of the hard drive that you have. Okay, now I'm going to show you what happens when I unplug the drive and I go to plug it in now. So say I'm just a... Uh, person that happens to see this hard drive and I have a label on it that says DJ Jeff's uh, video content and they're like, wow, this is DJ Jeff's video content. I'm sure he's got some cool stuff on it. You know, I'm kind of tooting my own horn there, but we'll see. Anyway, um, they're going to take the hard drive and they're going to plug it in like they normally do. They're gonna, I'm going to take this and download and put it all on YouTube and, and uh, everything that we don't want. Or even uh, maybe even a fellow DJ or someone else who DJs there wants the uh, exclusive content that you have. So it's going to plug it in, and I'm going to double-click it, and I'm going to see this image. I'm like, okay, what's this? I'm going to double-click on that. Wait a minute. Now I need a password to even mount anything I want. Okay, well, we can uh, we can try a couple different passwords, you know, like um, my super secure password here. Uh, and that one's not right. For some reason, the DJ Shad and Rocks My Socks password isn't right. Um, so ultimately, once I create... Uh, enter the right password, it's going to mount the drive uh, with the encrypted key, so this all happens in the background, and then I have full access to the file that I, any of the files that I put on here. Uh, once you have it mounted and you uh, have open up Serato, you're going to be able to um, add it just like it would be a normal hard drive. Now, if you open up Serato and you haven't put in that password, uh, your library is not going to load, just to give you guys a heads up on that. So make sure you do that first before uh, loading up Serato on um, on your external drive. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email at jeff at vjpromo.com. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post this in our Digi, Digi DJs forum as well as YouTube. Um, like I said, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me uh, give me a, or shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, again, this was encrypting an external hard drive with Mac OS X. Have a good one. Thanks.